Hello and welcome to this edition of Art Alive Film, coming to you from the Odeon Liverpool One. My name's Tony Lindsay. And my name's Tony Lloyd. And for this week's episode, The Women Take Centre Stage, we've got Wild, and we've also got Testament to Youth. And of course, we'll be finishing off with our usual roundup of the DVDs. <laughs> If your nerve deny you, go above your nerve. Emily Dickinson and Cheryl Strait. <sighs> oh my God, what have I done? Okay, here we are in the brains of the cinema, the projection booth. Bit noisy. Bit noisy, the, the sound you can hear are actually the fans on the projector. So bear with us folks while we, uh, uh, get into this. The first film today, of course, is Wild. Uh, and this is uh, based on a true story. True story. Uh, Cheryl Strayed, funnily enough. A uh, young lady who lost her mother uh, to cancer went into a massive dive, uh, sex, drugs, etc. Ended in divorce. Ended in divorce. Um, she was looking for a way back, and the, the answer was the Pacific Crest Trail. Which is a thousand mile... What was that? 1,100 mile trek. 1,100 mile trek. Across America, uh, taken in deserts, the wilderness, you know, it's an absolutely, uh, absolutely, absolutely... Oh, is it, absolutely. It, a, a trek that, like no other. And this girl had no experience with uh, outdoor pursuits. And she saw, she, it's clearly that she, she sees this trek alone. Yeah. as a, a healing process, as, Absolutely. As, as some way to get back to her former self. Back to the, the, the young girl her mother wanted her to be, as she says. In the and, and gave up everything for her to be. Gave up everything. Now, it's adapted from Cheryl's book by Nick Hornby, and he does a beautiful job. Brilliant. Uh, superb job. We've got uh, Jean-Marc Vallée, Brilliantly the director. Directed. He just works so well with the, uh, with the actors. Reese Witherspoon takes centre... Uh, centre stage here. Literally for most of the film. Oh yeah. For most of the film it's just here. Absolutely superb. Um, we've got Laura Dern in there, we've got As mom. Uh, Cliff D. Young and the thing we both said about this, there's, there's a 70s road, road movie, movie vibe yeah, or, or rather an off road movie vibe about this. It's, it's beautifully photographed, uh, you've got a great soundtrack. Um, I think, I think for, for, for me it was uh, fragments of memory not overplayed, no, no. subtly done. The editing is superb. It, it? wants you to engage, it, it gave you enough information to think and still engage. And, 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 and for anyone who likes this type of engagement, this type of uh, intimacy, yeah. it's a film well worth seeing. Mm -hmm. it, it, it will give you, though, the wonderlust, I reckon. I think you'll, you'll feel that whether you'll walk as much as a, a thousand miles, I'm not too sure. Yeah. But Reese is definitely up for uh, Oscar. Uh, potential yeah. here. She, I think she, she really does deserve it. At the end of the film, you, you actually feel like she goes in a girl, comes out a woman. And you really do feel that like story's real. Yeah, the, the character arc is so strong. Don't see it. Brilliant. Here are some questions I've been asking myself. What if I forgive myself? What if I was sorry? But if I could go back in time, I wouldn't do a single thing differently. What if all those things I did were the things that got me here? Okay, next up is A Testament of Youth, uh, an adaptation of Vera Britton's novel about her experiences uh, nursing in the First World War. What do you think, Tom? Um, I want to, I'm one of probably the, the few 1% who's not, I've not read the book, I know you have, yeah. um, but I've heard great things, it's a, a period in history, the First World War, um, that I'm really interested in, kind of haunting Very period, haunting. so I had a lot of expectation for it, but ultimately, I felt let down. I yeah, think. I have to agree with you, Tell. I was so wanted to love this movie, it's a fantastic uh, novel, obviously a memoir, uh, Julia Tweedy adapts it to the big screen, but I'm sorry, but she, she fails. Whether it's um, the director, James Marsh, yeah. um, it's not cinematic. And of course, when you look at who 
co-finance this, it's BBC Films. What we have here is a TV movie. Yeah, that, that is the main thing. It, it feels very closed down. It doesn't feel very cinematic. And to be fair, to be honest, really, I think the opening section, when it's building up friendships, um, Vera herself with, it, with, with, with her future uh, love interest, her brother and friends, yeah, who's also yeah. in love with Vera, um, that's all done well. Um, but where we come into sticky, uh, thing, I think, territory is when we come back from the war, when, when it really matters, really. Yeah. When it's yeah. about, he doesn't show the war, he has very small flashes of, of, of um, trench life, yeah. which is it's brave, but then you really need to have your actors haunted and show what's going this, on. This calls out for widescreen, cinematic, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, it, 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 which it doesn't have. Um, as, as Tony says, it keeps closing it down. There's one shot of a crane shot over a hut in, uh, I think it might be Malta, where you actually go over the roof and then you see the whole layout of hundreds of stretches and young men on. Mm. That was cinematic. You know, you get that. You get the thing of water being a, a recurring motif of rebirth. That was nice. The trenches where he looks in the water. Absolutely. And it, that was nice. But well, for, for me, it's relied upon for reaction, emotion, and those haunted lives affected by the war. We've seen snippets of it, but not enough for yeah. me. Alicia Vikander is not very Britain. We needed a young English rose for this. Alicia is Swedish. Whether that... Uh, Mattered, I don't know, but I, for me, she wasn't Vera. A, a real standout is um, Dominic West. Dominic West as is the dad. father. Now, there's a scene, a I'll just say, ra railway timetable scene in it that really uh, moved me. Absolutely, yeah. But on, on, I mean, considering this, there's, a, there's a really nice montage of places once visited at the yeah. end, and that started to strike a chord with me that had been absent up until that moment, and this comes really at the end. Yeah. Um, you get Miranda Richardson in there, um, you get um, Emily uh, Watson in there. Mm -hmm. Good cast. The youngsters don't quite pull it off though, as Tony said, the, the angst isn't, isn't quite there. It's, it feels like a, they haven't lived this. And of I course, mean, you are you facing this middle to upper class repression of emotion. Yeah, yeah, indeed. I, I understand that, but there are still, I'm sure, ways around to see that crumble. And, and, and the horror of what they've witnessed and the horror for those who were left behind. Yeah. It, it says a lot when one of the most poignant lines is left to a, a small bit player towards the end when she talks of ghosts. Was yes, around by ghosts. Yeah, Winifred Holtby, funnily enough. Yeah. There's a call for volunteers. It's as close to him as I can get. I need to be there. Our generation will never be new again. Our youth has been stolen from us. This part. Don't destroy it. It might be gone already. Life, love, and you. Think what they have meant to me. I won't abandon you. This is my promise to you. All of you. Okay, that's it for part one. You all right? No. So what's happening in two? <laughs> part two, we've got our usual DVD reviews, uh, followed by an interview with filmmaker Sean Trope. I know him. See you after the break, folks. <sighs> More walking. Hello and welcome back to part two of Arts Alive Film, coming to you from the Odeon Liverpool One. Earlier this week we caught up with filmmaker Sean Trope. Have a look at this. <laughs> Leo? Danny? <laughs> Sean, yes. thanks for coming to no speak to us today. Indeed. Cool. Indeed. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Myself? Okay, I am from Brighton and I moved up to Liverpool a year and a half ago. Uh, in search of a better life, of okay. course. Okay. Came to the right place. I think so. I've sort of found it, I reckon, so it seems yeah. to be going okay. You look happy. <laughs> I'm always happy. There's no point in being miserable, is there, really? Yeah. So that's it. Um, so yeah, I came up here a year and a half ago, 
Um, I was mainly working in film production down south, really. So when I come up here, I wasn't doing that at the first floor, but now I'm hoping to get back into it up here, maybe okay. eventually. Just go back a bit there. What sort of things did you uh, work on down south? Um, I started off where everyone starts off pretty much as a runner. I did that sort of thing I did on the feature films, short films and things like that. Um, then I started making short films of my own, which uh, my first film um, got recognised, got into a few festivals down south. And the one got into Reading Festival as well, which is great, got free entry to Reading. Awesome, that's always cool. Yeah, yeah, and then I got offered uh, my first um, directing gig on a feature film. And that's pretty much things went from there. So. Okay, tell us uh, a little something about the film. What's it about? The very first one I directed. Okay, it was um, some guy had like twenty thousand pounds, and he wrote the script himself, and he's producing it. Um, read the script, uh, didn't really like the dialogue in it, but I didn't really have a. Ch well, he didn't give me the chance to change it, so basically he wanted it left as it was, and that was it really. It's just um, we made the film. I, sh I should have walked away from it because there was like really bad dialogue. When people were talking, it was just awful, to be honest. But he had the money, he was making the choices. So I did it really for experience, to be honest. Um, the film went nowhere as expected. But again, it was all down to experience, and I'm really glad I did it. So, so how did you um, use that experience? What did you do next? What did I do next? I made a couple more short films. Again, they got into festivals. I got some French trees as well, which is great. And then after that, I applied for a casting job on another film being made in Poland, another feature film where the producer offered me the directing job instead. He said he robbed me as a director, as an actor. He said I could act in it as well, but I decided to direct for that one. So I did get another directing job because of it, so it all worked out. So what are you working on at the moment? Um, nothing at the moment. I haven't done a feature film for a few years now. The last film I've done was made in 2010. And yeah, and that's just um, about to be released on Bay TV, so they're going to be screening it very soon. Um, it's probably the most successful film I've done. It's, to, it's only made for £2,000 as well, it's a found footage film. But it's uh, done alright, won an award in America for Best Narrative Feature as well, which is good. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's doing alright. Do you right. have any, any favourite genres that you I like don't have any favourites. The only reason I make like, low budget horror is because they are low budget and you don't need much money to make them really. And, quite simplistic to make really. So you, you'd work in melodrama, you'd work in, you know, uh, sci-fi? Sure, yeah, I mean, I, I love sci-fi, obviously, it's great. Um, but yeah, I just seem to be doing horror films, I get hired to do horror films, it's like very good. So I'm intrigued now, so you tell us a little bit about the feature film. I know it's getting shown on Bay TV. Can you tell us a little bit about what the film's about? Sure, it's basically there's four people. There's the filmmaker, played by myself, there's a girl that plays my girlfriend, there's a colleague who's also female, and a producer who's another male. And they go to a cottage in Wales um, because it's renowned for being the most haunted cottage in Wales. And um, yeah, they just go and make a documentary about it, and things just go very wrong when they're down there. That's the that's the premise. Do you believe in ghosts? Dan, no. Dan, Dan, do you believe in ghosts? No. 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 Do you know where we're going tomorrow? Wales. Well done. You loaded it in the car, right? Yeah, yeah. Is this it? We're here. We're going to Kingsley Cottage, the most haunted cottages in Wales. Well, we all know, Sean, that the uh, the industry is quite a fickle place, and different roads take us in different directions. So, where do you see yourself ideally uh, for the future? I would, I think, I would love to make another film soon. It's been too long since I made one now, and it's just it's very hard when you, it's very hard to find the money. I find that very exhausting trying to find finances to make films, but it's also very hard to come up with low budget ideas that are decent enough to actually put on screen, you know what I mean? It's just like, you don't want to make something really bad, you know, just because it's low budget, so it's really, it's, I, the actual struggle of making a film, that, that does take the fun out of it, you know what I mean? So it's like, I'd rather, I, mean, I wish the money was just easy to come by, it makes things so much easier, really. So I don't even know where I see myself, I would love to do another few films, to be honest. Okay, so, me and Tommy, yeah. we, we can uh, provide you with some of that um, funding that you want, so if we could, I don't want to tease, but if we could, what would be the dream project you'd see yourself do? Well, actually, I was in that situation a few years ago. I wrote a screenplay, and it got interest from a company uh, down south, and they wanted to make it for one million. Now, I'd like to go back to that project, because it's actually, um, it's, it's set in the 80s, it's based on the true event that happened. I don't want to reel too much, because I know there's people no. out there. Um, but yeah, I'd like to go back to that script, and it's just, because um, I'm also a fan of 80s movies as well, and I like the whole genre of 80s movies, and it'd be good to make a film that was set in that decade as well. And I would actually go back and make that movie, which I wrote, I think it was back in 2005 I wrote that movie. So it's a long time ago, but I would definitely venture back to that one. 
It's important to say that this guy hasn't been idle in the last uh, couple of years. I mean, he's been doing quite a lot. You, you've been working in the TV industry, um, producing, directing. So, um, so tell us, how, how easy is it to juggle uh, your TV work whilst you, you're trying to prepare for your, your next film project? It's very difficult. You don't really get time to think about your next film project at all. I mean, it's just all the time you're working and earning money to pay the bills. Like, And it's good you're doing an industry like a TV industry because you can still get creative in that respect. But obviously, um, the film dreams are like, on the back burner at the moment, so okay. that's a bit of a shame. But I would say I would eventually like to get around to doing something else, I reckon, which will hopefully be soon. So what type of experience can an audience expect watching your film? Um, I think so, say, it'd, be on like, um, it'd be after nine o'clock when it'd be on, because there's a lot of swearing in it. Um, I think people will enjoy it because it's, it does focus on a lot of human conflicts. It doesn't focus just on the found footage genre, it focuses very much on the characters, and I think a lot of people were drawn to the characters in the film, which is great. Uh, and that was my focus because I know a lot of these found footage films don't focus on characters so much. So I made characters my main objective in the film because I didn't have the money to produce enough scares on the screen. So I need something to back it up. And it seems to have worked. So I would say that people like character films and things with lots of conflicts and drama, then watch Untitled. Sean, what the f Don't go up there. Sean, take the camera off. It won't, we're done. Thanks for coming in today to speak to Sean. Yeah, no worries. Thank, Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs> what are you waiting for? Turn it off. Why are you having to go back in there? <laughs> <laughs> Sean, what are you waiting for? Turn it off. Sean, what are you waiting for? Seems like a talented guy, that's yeah, Sean Troke. I'm, I'm going to be watching Untitled. Untitled, Friday night, 9 o'clock. Keep it on this station. Watch it. Right, DVD reviews. Yeah. Uh, what have we got? Well, we've got The Equaliser. Denzel um, Washington taking on the role of Robert McCall. Yeah, now this is based on an old 80s TV series that's, that uh, starred Edward Woodward. Absolutely, the great Edward Woodward. Yeah. Uh, Washington is uh, back again with the director Antoine Fuqua, who he worked with in 2001 in Training Day. Now, in that, ca that uh, film, he walks away with an Oscar. Yeah, he's a much more hard-edged one. This is a more genre piece, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, it's an Origins film, although yeah. we all know... It, 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 the, the only thing that, that we have as reference is the name, really. There's very little in the way of music or plot or, yeah, or whatever. It, it, it's, it, it's, it's, it's an origin it, of Robin As you Robin say, McCall. it sets up because the last scene um, references the line... That's, that's the only reference. Made, ...was made famous in the TV series. OK, so what have we got? Well, we've got a hard-edged thriller. We've got Denzel doing his... I think he's setting up his own franchise. Absolutely. Um, is it Chloe Morten? Yes, yeah, she, she... She's a call, a... The, the, the call girl who's having trouble with the Russian mafia, yeah. like you do. Yeah, indeed. And uh, he steps in to help her because he's the good guy. He's an ex-intelligence officer uh, with all the skills. We, we find him working in his local B&Q. Yeah. Uh, which doesn't quite make sense. Action movie, yeah. Denzel Washington working in your local, but then it all comes together in the denouement. But, but he does it. He does his usual turn of uh, you know a normal every every man in extraordinary or having extraordinary uh, powers and uh, under his belt, doesn't he? And, yeah. and, and and all of a sudden, a little bit a little bit sort of working man's version of Man on Fire. Really. Yeah, Tony Scott. Uh, yeah, film. brilliant Man on Fire. Martin Scott. Uh, what is it? Martin Sukosis uh, guests as the the Russian villain. Really great one. baddie. Yeah, yeah, really great Russian baddie. Covered in tattoos, a full hit, lethal. Um, but you know, you know, inevitably there's a showdown coming. Yeah, indeed. and it involves sprinkling water. The violence is it does go a little over the top towards the end. The photography is very dark. Yeah. This is not so much film noir as Sin City Three. And it? I found it a bit gall. It's slightly gall in that he's telling people, and it's great when he does telling people to do the right thing. Yeah, to be a good cop, to do this, and and as Tony said, we get some really strange. Being Q violence at yeah, the end. Indeed. Now, when a, a sequel was announced last year, yep. so it looks like this is the start of a franchise for Denzel. Uh, interestingly enough, it was um, Russell Crowe who was down to play this lead yep. for uh, for some years. I remember reading in the media press. But Denzel and Antoine 
obviously, as I say, have, have got together again. And but Denzel's always interesting to watch. Absolutely, he? Mr. You Integrity. Know, he make, he holds, makes it completely. He holds the screen. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, if, if you like Denzel, if you like the TV series, if you like action thrillers, this is one for you. It's a hard edge, but you'll like it. So that's it for this week's episode. Next week, we go darker with A Most Valiant Year, followed by Alex Garland's new sci-fi thriller, Ex Machina. I'm really looking forward to seeing that. Me too. Also, we'll be talking to Liverpool filmmaker Roger Appleton. See you then. See you then. I've invented a machine with consciousness. I'm Ava. I've never met anyone new before. You can test how human she is. Why me? What is this building? It's the next model. It's going to be the real breakthrough. You have to help me. Ex Machina.